Hello and welcome to this video on text field in Swift UI. If you want your users to input text into your app, the best choice you have is text field. There is a better solution for a certain use case, but I will cover that at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Text fields require a little more setup than the usual text view, but as we will see, it's not that difficult. I will cover the basics first and then move to some advanced things later in the video. Let's start off by creating a new project in Xcode. We will select app, give it a name, which is not important, and save it somewhere on our machine. So we will start running the project and waiting for it to build. In order to keep things easy to follow, we will go with the example of entering a username. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to declare a state variable called username, which is of type string and which is empty at first. Then we can replace our text here with a text field. As you can see, there are a lot of constructors to choose from. So we're going with this one, which is the most basic one. So we first can enter a string saying enter username and then as a binding we're handing in our username state variable. If we now resume the preview we can see that this gets rendered. Nice. In order to see this in action we first have to run our preview and then we can enter a username name, new user, super innovative. Now, as we can see, we're handing this down to the text field as a binding. The dollar sign means that the text field is allowed to change the value of our state property here. And therefore, this already works perfectly. Text field takes two additional parameters. Both are optional. Also, both are closures. We'll start with the first one, which is on editing changed. This indicates whether the user has finished editing our text field. In order to see this, we'll just create another state variable called is editing, and we're setting this to false. Now we're having here the closure, which is getting a Boolean value, and now we can say, hey, we're setting our state to the current value handed over to this closure. Now, in order to see anything, we will have to create a VStack and add a text here, which is simply outputting is editing. And then we can see on the right here that we're entering a username now the editing changed to true and we're adding a value here new user and once we hit enter the value jumps back to false now this looks ugly so hit Control i to indent now we're having a wonderful code ready to go the second parameter is called on commit and it's handed into the constructor as a trailing closure again if you're not familiar with multiple trailing closure syntax, which is actually pretty hard to pronounce, then you can read up on it in the Swift documentation. I will post the link in the descriptions below. We can use this by simply writing on commit here, and then we can just execute code we want to execute right now. So an example for this would be a validation function. We can now validate the username. So we could create one, and just do smart validation things down there. One great thing about text fields is that we don't always have to use strings as bindings. There's also other values such as numbers that we can choose here combined with a formatter that will automatically format the number for us. There's plenty of options to choose from and I will post a link in the description which formatters are available. But let's have a look at how we can use text field with numbers very easily. Let's have a look at how we can implement this. 
first we have to change our value here to a number which can be a double and we're just setting this initially to 0, 0.0 now what we're also needing is a number formatter and this will be just a regular number formatter which doesn't take any parameters so what we can do now is we can replace this text field with a new one and as we can see there's other options here which include a formatter so we're having the option again to create a placeholder here as a binding we take our number and as the formatter we are taking the number formatter here and then we can just output our number here to see how that is changing now we can hit build and as we can see we now have a value here we can change we can hit 20 here and then once we hit enter the value is directly formatted to a number if we enter a string here nothing will change so this validation is done automatically what we also can use is the on editing changed and the on commit trailing closures here now that we have seen the basics of how to create a text field let's now have a look at the different options we have to style these text fields we're starting with the basic example here we have our text field which is simply having a username the first thing we have have a look at is text field style we have three options to choose from on ios the first one is the default text field style which if we have a look at is well the default value then we can go with the plain text field style which looks exactly the same i really don't know what the difference is and the other option is the rounded border text field style as we can see this changes the value a little bit and our style looks a little bit different but there's not really a lot of options to go with so we have to create our own so let's just delete this and then say oh we can change the font here to something like title and as you can see the value changes here gets smaller or larger and of course we can also use coloring options like changing the foreground color which interestingly only changes the value of the entered text or we can change the background to something like color system background which is the system background here we don't see anything but we can go with system fill and this gives a nice gray little background here now this might come as a surprise to you but we're probably not going to win an apple design award with this so i think we should just have a quick look at how we can still go and make this a little bit better so we might want to use some padding here to make it a little bit more spacey then we can use something like a clip shape for example the rounded rectangle give it a little corner radius maybe say 20 this can be continuous and then we can even add some shadow to our view now with this little code this already looks much better another option we have here is to get rid of the background and only give it a border for example a gray one and then we can even change the width to something larger maybe a little too large and go with that which is also a pretty nice look the styling of a text field is highly subjective and can change with designs so i don't want to spend too much time on that what i want to focus on however is how you can tailor the text field to your needs depending on the type of text you want the user to enter so let's have a look at that the first modifier i want to have a look at is the keyboard type let's look at our little example here we want the user to enter his or her email address we can assist the user when we add the keyboard type modifier we can set it to the value of our email address and then the user will have quicker access 
to the add symbol, for example. We all know that the only thing that's harder than entering an email with the standard keyboard from Apple is getting a haircut during a pandemic. The next modifier is called disable autocorrection, and it does exactly that. It takes a Boolean and lets you set whether autocorrection is enabled or disabled. Now raise your hand if you had to enter a username or a gamer tag and it just got destroyed by autocorrect and you got angry. Let's be better programmers and disable autocorrection where it might give aggressions to our users. The next modifier is called auto capitalization. It gives us four options to choose from. We can go with none, which as the name suggests, doesn't capitalize any of our text. We can go with words, which will capitalize every word the user enters. We can go with sentences, which well capitalizes the beginning of each sentence or go with all characters, which can be useful. For example, if the user needs to enter a country code. Note that this modifier is not needed when you set the keyboard type to something like numpad, because in that case, a capitalization wouldn't make any sense. Also, we should add a dot here to make sense of all of this. The last modifier I want to show you is called text content type. While this won't change your text fields visually, it will really help the system to identify which type of contact the user wants to enter. For example, we can again go with an email address. Now what this will do is it will suggest the user different mail addresses he or she previously inputted into some app. There is other options to choose from. For example, we could go with something like an address, a name, a location. Again, note that this is not really doing any visual changes, but it really helps the system guide the user through the process. I will once again leave a link in the description to show the different possible values as described in the Apple documentation. These were all the modifiers I wanted to show you concerning text field. There's only a few that change the visual appearance of our view. However, I think it's highly recommended to really take care of all the other ones in order to be a good platform citizen and make the best user experience possible for our users. Now you might be wondering, well, there's one thing missing. What about passwords? I'm glad you asked. Let's look at our example here. We only have the password as a state variable. and We're using a text field. In this case, that's not correct. Apple provides us with a secure field, which is perfectly tailored towards this use case. If we now enter a value, it will automatically hide the content for us. There's two differences to the regular text field. The first one is that we are not able to use formatters to change the output of our binding. This makes sense because passwords are always strings. The second difference is that we only have the on commit closure available. So we can still use trailing closure syntax to do something like validate our password and then create a validation function, which will do that. This will, of course, have very smart code validating our password. Now, it doesn't look like a big thing to use the secure field instead of the text field, but it is highly recommended to both have the semantically correct view here and make use of all the superpowers Apple gives us when we conform to system definitions and standards. With this video, you should have a great overview of how text fields work in SwiftUI. Again, we should really focus on providing the users the best experience we can. If you like this video, then sorry for this, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.